Tipifarnib is a farnesyl transferase inhibitor, and um, um, the results that um, uh, I just uh, published with my colleagues in the intergroup, actually, from SWAG, ECOG, and uh, uh, CLGB at the time, now the Alliance, um, was from a large randomized phase two study of Tipifarnib in patients who were over the age of 70 with previously untreated acute myeloid leukemia. There was no other selection for those patients if they wished to not get intensive chemotherapy and go on this study of an oral agent, they were eligible. Um, the most remarkable thing about this study is that we accrued uh, 350 patients to four different treatment arms with Tipifarnib in a 15-month time period. What that tells me is that there are patients out there whose physicians and, their, and the patients themselves who feel very strongly about whether they want to get intensive chemotherapy or a less intensive approach. Remember, there was very little data at the time that we started the study that Tipifarnib was effective. The study was informed by prior work that had been done, especially by Jeff Lancet, who's now at the Moffitt, showing about a 15 to 20 percent response rate in these patients who received Tipifarnib. Um, in our study, we looked at different doses and schedules, uh, four different doses and schedules in these patients. We basically recapitulated the data that was um, published by Jeff Lancet. Uh, one of the arms had as high as a 20 percent CR and PR um, rate, um, but uh, none of the arms were felt to be sufficiently effective to proceed to uh, further phase three testing. Um, at the same time, a study had been done comparing Tipifarnib to supportive care showing no survival benefit. This was a European study. 